I want to talk to you today a little bit about marriage, about husbands and wives. If you could say to yourself, well, you know, Doc, I have a pretty happy marriage. I could ask you the question, has it been easy? And almost 100% of the time, you'd have to say, <laughs> no, it hasn't been easy. It's been one of the most difficult challenges there is. But what if we could make it a little bit more simple? What if everyone knew what their job was and everybody else knew what their job was? What if the husband really knew what he was supposed to do for the wife? What if the wife really knew what she was supposed to do for the husband? And so often it seems like guesswork. Now we can read in Ephesians chapter 5 where Paul says, Wives, be subject to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is head of the church. And we can go down a little bit to verse 25 and read, Husbands, love your wives just like Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water of the word. So if we think about that, husbands are supposed to say, Husbands is what they normally say. You're supposed to respect me. You're supposed to respect me. But the wife looks at the husband and she knows. I'm supposed to be subject to you. I'm supposed to honor you. But sometimes, guys, let's face it. We don't give our wives much to honor. <laughs> I know I've done that a time or two. And I thought to myself, well, why did I just say that? Why did I just do that? For years, I used to do that. So the Lord took me way back into the book of Genesis where God created male and female. He created he them, created he him. If you read it, that's what it says. Now Eve doesn't come along until chapter 2. But there was male and female there. Where was the female? I think it was inside Adam because God took a, the rib out of Adam's side, fashioned it into a female. Now, they were pretty happy in the garden. They were just bopping around, just enjoying life, you know. And then that serpent, Satan, comes in. And he caused Eve to eat the apple. He lied to her. She ate the apple, and Adam ate the apple too. And what happened was a great fall. And when I thought about that, I really meditated on that, everyone. And I thought, what was woman supposed to have been if Eve would have never eaten the apple, if Adam would have stopped her and they wouldn't have done that, what would woman have turned into? Because it seems like women seem to be the hot spot in every generation. The devil seems to attack women more than any other thing on the planet. And I think I know why. When Jesus, they called Jesus the last Adam. Jesus completed what the first Adam didn't complete. So the man is supposed to do whatever it takes to build the wife up. Husband loves your wives like Christ loved the church. Well, what did Christ do for the church? Whatever he had to do. He lived for the church. He built up the church. He died for the church. He rose again for the church. So what are we supposed to do for our wives, man? Do you know that the husband creates the emotional atmosphere for the home let's face it guys if you get up cranky in the morning everybody's cranky your kids are cranky the wife's cranky the day is not good what if you get up happy most of the time everybody's happy well, what about the spiritual atmosphere of the relationship do you know guys that that's your responsibility as well it's your responsibility to make sure that you constantly feed your wife with the washing of the water of the Word. Do you know I read my wife bedtime stories every night as we're laying in bed before we close up, turn off the lights and close our eyes and go to sleep? We read books. We read the Word of God. We read books. Right now we're reading Chris Vallotton's book, um, Spirit Wars. Oh, that's a, that's a deep book. It's really, if you read that, it's really going to tell you what's going on in, in the world, how demonic attack really affects marriages, how it affects societies. And if you want to watch it, he has an hour and a half long video on YouTube. It's called Spirit Wars, Chris Vallotton. I recommend it highly. It's a real paradigm shift. 
But in it, he talks about how demonic forces can really affect lives, can affect relationships. And we read those books. I read to her every night. I make sure she gets a solid diet of the Word of God. And in order to do that, i got to be where I'm supposed to be. And sometimes I'm not. And when I'm not, well, it kind of shows. It all starts somewhere. Who is that president that says the buck stops here? In other words, it's got to start somewhere, and it's got to stop somewhere. And that's the husband's job. That's his job design from God. So we feed our wives, we do whatever it takes to make sure our wives get the Word of God so they know what to do. Now I'm not saying that a wife doesn't know what to do. Unfortunately, um, absentee fathers all over the world, and sometimes women have to be the husband, the wife, to their children. And I think that's sad, but God does make sure that the woman receives exactly what she needs. He's her husband. If she needs one, he's her husband. But men, I think that it's our time to begin to build up our family, to build up our wives, to build up our children. What do we do? Whatever we have to do. Now, I know sometimes it isn't easy to love your wife like Christ left the church, especially when they're angry or they're upset or there may be times when they really don't know what's going on themselves and they're so frustrated they lash out at you. And you're like, Father, how can I, how how can I love that like, like you love the church? Well, my spiritual father, Kenneth Copeland, I listened to him. I've got a stack of CDs a mile high of his. I love his teaching. He's been my spiritual father for the last 46, almost 47 years of my life. And he always says, he he always took responsibility for him and Gloria. He always took responsibility for it all. And he taught me to take responsibility for my family, for my wife, for my children. And in this ministry that we're in, fortworthchristiancounseling.com, it's the Pennywood Institute. When I see my wife at work, and I know that I had a part in that, when she sees me at work, see, she honors me and respects me because I love her like Christ loved the church, which allows her to honor and respect me, which allows me to love her like Christ loved the church. See how it goes back and forth? She honors and loves, and I love her like Christ loved the church. She honors and respects me, which gives me the ability to lead. Have you ever seen one of those, those joke posters that says, I'm the boss in my house, and I have my wife's permission to say so? Well, we all laugh at it, but it's true. It really is true. We can't lead unless our wives follow us. They can't follow us unless we give them something to follow. Wash your wife, having washed her, having sanctified her, it says, having cleansed her with the washing of the water of the word. So guys, open your Bibles in the morning. I recommend reading at least a chapter a day. Pray with your mate before you leave. If you leave early, you can call her on the phone. Talk to her. Make sure that every day you're reading the Word and praying with one another. And while you're at it, get your kids involved. It's not going to be time wasted. It really won't. It may not seem like they're paying attention. But two of my kids are in ministry right now, and a third one's headed that way real quick. And I sometimes I thought, well, this is just time wasted, but it really wasn't. It wasn't time wasted. Be the husband and the wife that you're supposed to be. It's got to start somewhere. Let it start with you. I'm Dr. W. H. Pennywit. You can reach us at fortworthchristiancounseling.com or dallaschristiancounseling.com. Click the Contact Us link, and you can send us a a, a message by email. Or you can call us, 817-898-0490. We're here for you, and we can't wait to hear from you. And Jesus is Lord.